only you know what dwells in your heart when you are alone. But nothing is worse for a wise person than to have nothing to love. everybody, hail and welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Um, this is your first time, my name is Jesse and I host a weekly video here on this channel, usually every Sunday night, uh, talking about various Norse heathenry related subjects, things that may strike my interest or fancy at the time, uh, a couple other things that may come across uh, from some fan requested stuff, and then there's also series type things. Uh, we have a deity discussion series, a storytelling series called Bragi's Corner, um, there's a whole mall discussion uh, series. You can check the playlist in the channel uh, description for all that. And hopefully you'll check it out. And if you like it, give those videos a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, make sure you become a subscriber and click the bell notification so that way you're notified every time I upload new content. Um, today's discussion is going to hit home, I think, for a lot of folks, myself included. Um, the title of the video is Hanging from the Tree. Uh, and, and kind of understanding the, the, uh, the struggles that heathens face with things like depression specifically. Um, the reason why I wanted to bring this subject up is because um, something happened last week with me uh, where I hit a pretty heavy uh, block in the road. I usually go live on this channel on Monday nights and last week the live stream was cancelled uh, just due to some really heavy stuff that I was dealing with at the time and I kind of addressed it a little bit last week and just um, just to let everybody know you know what was going on. Um, but this is something that I felt could benefit not just myself, um, but hopefully others that watch this kind of get a, a feel of some things about how we can deal with depression as heathens. Um, so before we get into the discussion, as is customary, we'll go ahead and light our incense, light the candle, and uh, get this show on the road. Alright, there we go. All right. <clears throat> So to start off the discussion, um, I'd like to cite a couple of stanzas from the Hobomol. Uh, it's going to be the Dr. Jackson Crawford translation of the Poetic Edda, which I highly recommend for heathens, uh, new heathens, any, anybody who already has a copy of the Poetic Edda, whatever your translation is, um, I certainly recommend Dr. Jackson Crawford's um, translation because it is such an easily readable format, um, his, the wording of things and whatnot. Um, so we're going to go to, uh, like I said, the uh, Hovamal, and uh, from stanza 138 and 139, this is Odin speaking, says that, I know that I hung on a wind-battered tree nine long nights, pierced by a spear, and given to Odin, myself to myself, on that tree whose roots grow in a place no one has ever seen. No one gave me food, no one gave me drink, at the end, I peered down, I took the runes, screaming, I took them, and then I fell. You know, I think it's, uh, it's important to understand this about Odin and his experience in hanging from Yggdrasil um, for those nine days and nights, experiencing the pain and enduring the discomfort and the trials that he had to endure while hanging from the tree before he was able to discover the runes. Um, but it's important, the reason why I think it's important to understand that is that the enduring of trials that he faced, the discomfort, the pain of being pierced by his own spear, the hunger that he no doubtedly felt, the thirst that he felt of not being get, able to get any relief for those nine days and nights, um, the pain and the suffering and the trials that he faced at the end, where it says he said at the end, uh, I peered down and took up the rune. So there was an end to his suffering. There was an end to that trial. And it was the rewards that he received, the, the, the knowledge, the wisdom of the runes that he was able to acquire came from enduring the trials and the tribulations and the suffering that he had to in order to get it. And this, to me, is very much 
or what depression um, specifically can kind of be about or what it can feel like. You know, we're, we're, we're going through these hard times. We're going through these, this, this time of struggle, this time of pain, this time of, you know, any sort of mental or physical struggle that would just put us in this, this kind of funk, you know. Um, and just to kind of remember that endure, you know, endure, hang on, um, don't let go, and you will get the reward from it, even though it may be hard to realize at the time, even though you may be in so much pain or discomfort, whether it's physical pain or mental pain, you will get there, you will reach the end, and you will get that reward for so, or for doing so. To kind of understand a bit more about, you know, Odin, and, and, and he's one, I think, that we can all look to, to un kind of understand how to battle and deal with depression. Um, I'm going to also read from another poem in the Poetic Edda. The poem is called uh, Grinsmo. And in stanza 20 is where we hear about Odin fearing for the return of his two ravens, Hugin and Munin. And in this uh, translation, stanza 20 says, Thought and memory, which are Hugin and Munin, my ravens fly every day, the whole world over. Each day I fear that thought might not return, but I fear more for memory. You know, so here we have again another example of Odin uh, worrying and fearing for the return of his own memory, or the, for, of the return of memory, our mental capacity, our mental fortitude, these, these, these things that make up our minds, you know, um, they're very precious to us, and we don't want to lose them, we don't want to feel like we're battling ourselves um, but it happens. Um, you know, we see that throughout the lore, um, Odin does regularly struggle with issues, uh, you know, that those of us who've had to cope with depression can recognize, right? Um, the Allfather, he's, he's not a very happy person for the most part, uh, or by nature. You know, time and again, um, we kind of see him getting weighed down by regret or, um, you know, burdened by the weight of the fates that he himself can't even control, you know. Uh, he's always trying to do things to, to interfere, intercede with the fate that is ultimately his, but he can't change it, and that anxiety, that, that, that stress, that depression weighs on him heavily. Um, you know, and as his story kind of progresses through the lore, we see that this constant struggle you know, changes him uh, as, as a person or as a figure. He becomes more, uh, more cynical, uh, at times, he's, he eyes the world, or he views the world with less and less hope, and, and, and more and more, you know, skepticism, or uh, things that, like I said, depression can quite often take this form, and look like this for us, you know, these are not uncommon things that people with depression struggle with and face. Um, I'm going to go back again to the Hohomol, because there's so much in here that we can learn from when it comes to what we're talking about today. Um, in stanza 54, so we're going to read stanza 54 through 56, okay? It says, you should be only a little wise, never too wise. The happiest person throughout their lives are the moderately wise. You should be only a little wise, never too wise. A wise man's heart is seldom glad if he's truly wise. You should be only a little wise, never too wise. It's best not to know your fate beforehand. You'll live happier if you don't. And so there again, you know, the words of the High One are admonishing against knowing too much, having too much knowledge. Odin is in this constant seeking of knowledge and this constant, you know, he wanders everywhere in the search for knowledge and the search for ways that to, you know, divert his inevitable fate. And the more he learns, the more he gathers, the more he gets. Um, like we said earlier, you know, the, the, the kind of the, the worse he gets in the long run because he knows all these things and it weighs him down and it, it makes it tough, you know. So we're kind of admonished to, you know, sometimes it's best not to know. Ignorance is bliss sometimes is what they say. You know, so sometimes it's just absolutely best to be on the lesser end of knowing things. You know, we don't carry so much of a burden um, when we do that. Um, and so... Because of these things, we have, you know, we know these things, right? We, we can see some things in, in our texts, uh, some of the ancient texts or the historical texts, uh, some of the lore um, about that depression absolutely is a part of the dynamic, you know, within, within anybody's world, including heathens. 
Uh, but how do we deal with it? You know, because I think that for a lot of us, um, especially new heathens coming into this, you know, it may be more different, or it may be difficult on a different level, more difficult on a different level to deal with depression, because we get this, um, you know, we, we value things like um, uh, bravery and courage and strength and self-reliance and all these things that, you know, we, we put great emphasis on in our worldview and in the view of a lot of heathens, I think, you know, that's, those are some really high quality things. That's what we want to be. And then what, when we feel, when we are battling with depression and things that kind of make us feel like we're weak, you know, um, so, and that's just it though. You know, I, I want to, I want to focus on the fact that, you know, depression is not a form of weakness. You're not weak for feeling that if you are going through a tough time, and you just feel like there's you know no way out or that you're a lesser person for it you're not you know, like we said earlier even the all father battles with these things and has to get through them and has to endure the the suffering that comes with it to, to gain the reward at the end so you are not weak for feeling this you know um we try to convince ourselves i think a lot of times when we when we are battling depression we try to convince ourselves as heathens you know that we should just you know, man up and get over it or, you know, um, at least for me, you know, like my whole, when I hit my wall last week, it was, you know, what's wrong with you? Why, why do you feel this way? You have so much to be thankful for. You have so much to be proud of. You have so much to be, you know, so many great things to look at that you accomplished or are accomplishing. Why are you, you know, why are you letting this get you down? Um, so we, we, we face those feelings. We battle those feelings with ourselves. You know, so what resources do we have when we feel this way? You know, we've talked about the the backbone of the depression within a heathen context and how Odin himself battles it and stuff. But okay, now what people want to know is, well, how do I get over this? How, or how do I face this battle? How do I fight? You know, and it's not any different than what I would tell anybody in the sense that, you know, use the resources that are available if you've not been diagnosed. If it's, if it's something that you hit very regularly and you're you know, really in dark places a lot, you know, you, you should probably get some medical attention, a psychological evaluation or something to determine, is there really, truly something going on throughout the chemical makeup of your brain that is causing you to feel this way? There, there are certainly medical reasons why depression affects people differently in more ways than others, right? Therapy. Um, it doesn't work for everybody. Um, I'm not the one to, kind of, to go to therapy. I'm, I'm not the type of person to speak to the others about my problems who I don't know, who that doesn't understand my view on things or whatever. So maybe it doesn't work for everyone, but there's certainly a resource to take into consideration. Um, you know, uh, the medication aspect, uh, tread those waters carefully because some of these things are actually physically harmful to you, but definitely realize that there is resources out there, um, not just synthetic medications, but actual, you know, wholesome foods, wholesome, uh, supplements, things that can, you can research and take that actually are known to, pro, you know, provide for a healthier mind, a healthier brain, because it's an organ, you got to feed it, you got to take care of it, right? Um, and, but then one of the other things that I think we as heathens have at our disposal that is such an important part of our view on things and, and how heathenry works is community, and from within community is our own respective in and guard our own respective inner circles that we can go to. This is where I think a lot of us um, can go to, or we should be going to. We should be going to our Inungard. We should be going to our community. We should be looking towards one another, you know, to help one another in those times when we're struggling, right? You know, some people out here watching may be in areas where they don't have this tribe uh, or kindred set up. They're not a part of a larger or, or at least somewhat structured heathen community. They feel like they are literally alone. They're a solitary practitioner. They do things solo. I, I, you know, for the longest time, that was kind of my approach to things. I'm just going to do this by myself. And then as I grew in this path and in this way, got to realize the importance and the need for community and for, for establishing that. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, the whole self-reliance thing, the whole being able to provide for your own, that's great and that's wonderful. But the sense of community, the sense of, that's how community survives, is by helping one another. And we're in modern times now, guys. We have a lot going on in our lives that our ancient ancestors didn't. You know, it was mainly survival of the fittest. It was mainly, 
you know, making sure that the crops were taken care of, that, you know, you had enough food to last you through the winter to get you back into the harvest season and it produced a good, you know, so their, their stresses or their things didn't necessarily, uh, they didn't have as many things to worry about. Like we know nowadays, you know, when's the lights going to get paid? Rent's due. I got to put gas in the car. I've got, you know, my kids that I got to go pick up from this. I got this, all these various things, right, that, that add to our stresses that can really hit us at some points and make us, you know, enter this state of depression. That is when we can go to our Ingard and when we can go to our tribes. If you don't have a tribe, you have an Ingard. You have people that you trust. You have at least a few people that you can go to um, and reach out to, you know. Don't go through this alone. And that's one of the things that I am so thankful for is the outreach of this community, whether it be people who I've never met in person reaching out to me online, sending me messages, sending me texts, shooting me an email, whatever, you know, replying to videos, um, just letting me know that you can reach out to me. I'm here for you. Don't feel alone in this. But so anyways, you know, the, the whole thing with battling depression, don't feel like you have to go through it alone. You, you have your Indian guard, you have your community, you have friends, you have people around you that are willing and wanting to help. They don't want to see you fail. Um, the darkness that is depression has consumed a lot of people and we hate to see it when that happens. You know, we want to see our friends and our families beat the battles that they face. We don't want to see the battles consume or beat them. Um, but anyways, guys, that is my video about depression. I hope that it has helped you view things as heathens, um, how you can um, you know, battle this, that you're definitely not alone. If you are facing depression, there's contact information down below um, for me that if you just need somebody to talk to, if you don't want to go through the whole, you know, official stuff, definitely seek help when you need it. You can email me, the information is down below. You can shoot me a message on Facebook. You can you know, reach out to me any of the ways of contact information. If you just need another heathen to talk to, if you just want to talk to somebody, definitely reach out. Get the help that you need if you need it, and you'll get through this. You know, you'll get through this. You're going to hang on that tree. We all, you know, face our, our demons, our, our battles um, from hanging on that tree. We, we all feel that, that pain. Um, you can get through this. So... Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw today and want to see more stuff, please feel free to donate to the channel. The link for that is down in the description as well. Helps me get more better quality content out here for you. Tune in tomorrow for the live stream. There's going to be a giveaway that I was supposed to do last week, the winners of which are going to be announced uh, tomorrow on the live stream on the YouTube channel, which is going to be at 7 o'clock Central Time. So definitely tune back in for that. We'll have some you know, casual conversations. Everybody that's watching live on Facebook, Please stick around. I will be with you shortly to get to see all your comments and whatnot. Thank you all for your support. Right up here, you'll see the Floating Midgard Musings logo. Make sure you click on that, become a subscriber, and check out any of the other related content that you see floating on the end screen. So thank you all again so much for watching. Hail.